Hello everybody. Welcome to Feature Friday. We'll get started here in about two more minutes. <clears throat> Woohoo! My goodness, what an eventful week. Yeah, this is, what is today's date? It is, it is September the 15th, everybody. Happy September. Happy National Sewing Month. Hello, Coralie. Howdy. And, oh my gosh, fall, this time of the year really resonates with me for one reason. This begins my busy season for workshops out on the road. I will have a very funky schedule to be here on YouTube. When I'm at home, I will be online. I will be doing a show. Hi, Donna. Good evening. And But for the next few Fridays, I'm not going to be having a feature Friday. But in between gigs through the week, I will be on here to say hello to everybody and to be working on a project. Oh, my goodness. But yes, fall is one of the busiest it's usually the busiest time of the year for me for my travel schedule and to teach workshops and all that fun stuff. Hi, Sandra from Chattanooga. Howdy. I go through, Sandra, I go through Chattanooga quite frequently. I will actually be driving through there, let me think, two weeks from today. I'll be headed to Naples, Florida. <clears throat> Okay, woohoo. So everyone, it is six o'clock and we're gonna get this party started. I decided to do something that I haven't done for a long time here on the channel and that's to have a serger night. So tonight and then one more night, I am go it will take me two sessions to get this done, but I'm going to be making my, a kimono <clears throat> a kimono slash bathrobe slash beach wrap, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I call it a kimono. It's my own pattern, and this is something that I teach out on the road. So you get to see me construct it. Unfortunately, I'm not going to give my pattern out. I always only do that through a class. And I'll be having a serger class soon. By that, I mean after my travel schedule clears out clears out this fall, I will be having some Zoom classes available to those of you that that are wanting to take a nice Zoom class with me and make some of this fun stuff. Okay, all of that being said, woo-wee, I missed y'all, and we're going to get started. So, a few weeks ago, I showed you some fabric I purchased. And I did get it cut out today. And it is this, it's a, it's a, a non-stretchy knit. But check it out, here it is. This is what I'm making my kimono from. So it has these beautiful little gold flux in it. I don't know if the lighting in the studio will, will fully do it justice or not. But this is what I'm making my kimono out of. So I've got all my pieces cut. Let's see, that is a f one of the front sides. Let me just get my pieces separated here. That's a front side. That's the back. The, this is for the front facing. And then these, t there's two of these. These are the sleeves. Hi, Carol. Hi, Lee. Oh, wonderful, Lee. Congratulations. I know. I bet I know where you got it at, too. <laughs> yeah, so I found this fabric, and I just thought I've always, I've always loved the Zodiac and stuff like that. And yeah, so this is all this, this actual star chart, this, the constellations 
for the zodiac signs. So I'm going to unwind, undo this. So this is the back of it. And I make this pattern so it fits really super loose because this is something to put over. Like let's say you're at a pool or at the beach. This would be something to actually wear over that. Oh, wonderful, Allison. That's right, Lee. I knew that's where it was. I'll be down there for you. Are you going to their sewing, their big sewing expo? Okay, Lisa. I'll be down there for their sewing expo at Punta Gorda in two weeks. Gosh, just two weeks. Oh my gosh, how time flies. Woohoo. Hi, Janiel. Yes, yeah, so this is the back. So, what I'm going to start with, I'm first going to attach the left front and the right front to my back piece. Okay. And how I did this is an easy peasy method. And what it is, let's see, make sure I get the right pieces. That is not the piece I want. That's a sleeve. That is my facing, and there are my others. Okay, so what I'm going to do, oops, I'll take that straight pin out. I'm going to swap to a camera. <clears throat> Oh, wonderful, Carol. Wonderful. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to pin my shoulder seam. So I'm going to have a left and a front pinned right to the shoulder. We're going to have so much fun, Carol. I'll probably be wearing my kimono that I'm making tonight down there at some point in time. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me check and make sure this pattern is... And it's not a directional pattern, so that's good. <clears throat> so first, I'm going to sew on one of the sides. And oh my gosh, there is something new out this fall for the Triumph. Triumph and Ovation Baby Lock Sergers. Uh-oh, Cora. That's not good. Well, if he just used them once or twice, it's not going to hurt them. But I know what you mean by that. Let me get my pins here. I'm going to swap to this other camera so you can kind of see better what I'm doing. Okay. Come over here in the camera. I'll tilt it down a little bit. Here we go. Okay. So I'm pinning right sides together, of course. Hopefully. Let me make sure. Well, that's not. And I'm just going to use a four thread overlock for right now. Do, do, do. Okay. So I'm doing my shoulder seams is what I'm doing first. And this fabric is super slippery, everybody. Boy, howdy. If you let it, it will completely get away with, away from you. Oh, wonderful. Then that is what I'm talking about. Check it out. This is what we're talking about. So, you know, the machine came with a cover stitch table that Baby Lock just released. This table here, and this is for Overlock, and it is fabulous. I just love this. If you have a Triumph or an Ovation, this will fit your machine and you want this. Not only do you want this, you need this because as you'll see as I'm surging my seams together on my kimono, this little table makes it super easy to guide that fabric up through there. Okay. 
move this back over. Okay. Now then, my shoulder seam. And I don't cut out selvages or anything like that. I trim them off as I'm surging the seams, at least on this pattern. And my, my type of clothing that I, I like to make is based on old Japanese patterns from a couple, from 100 or 200 years ago. This is not a tailored kimono, everybody. This is to be very loosely worn. So I have my first panel pinned in. Right here's an edge. Here's the outer edge for the edge of the shoulder. Oh, it will not fit the evolution core, the only the triumph and the ovation. Okay. Let me swap to another camera and you can see what I'm going to sew here. And right there. Here we go. Take that pin out. Once it gets started, I'm just going to, since this is so slippery, I am not going to run it fast. But what I've got, I've got the knife blade right on the edge of that multi, the different colored selvage. So as I'm doing my four thread overlock, it's cutting off the selvage on this as well. I'm using silk pins. I'm also using um, my serger needles are the SUK, which means there's more than one type of serger needle for our sergers, everyone. And I'm using size 80 slash 12 type L. L is in looky, looky loo. Type L class A serger needles, which really means it is, let me get my package up. There we go. This is the serger needle that I am using tonight. Hi Ernestine. Type L serger needle. This is this has a ballpoint tip, everyone, so it's perfect for knits. You don't want anything with a sharp point going through knits. It'll ca cause it to run. So I just got that first shoulder seam done. Woohoo! And I have my stitch length at about you know, two and a half to three. And I have my width at the letter M, I believe. Let me see here. No, I don't. I have it all the way to its widest part up to it's at 7.5. And now there's one side of my for my sleeve put in. Now I'm going to put in the other side. Not my sleeve, my front. I'm putting the sewing the fronts and backs together. Let me get this. <clears throat> Once I get them married, I will pick it up so you can see me what I'm actually doing here. Okay, then I'm just going to pin it, pin it so it stays in place, so that when I run it through, it's not so this is really super slippery, slidey fabric. I have my differential in, at the end position, neutral. Okay. I'm just going to widen this up. There we go. Now you can see a little better and I won't have to swap between cameras so much. Okay, you. There we go. Okay. 
Hello, Stephanie. Okay, now I'm going to sew that seam. Right sides are together. I'm making sure of that. I don't want to have to, since I'm cutting it as I'm cutting off the selvages, I don't want to mess it up. This is actually garment fabric, everybody. <clears throat> I saw it when I was out shopping for upholstery fabric, and I just had to have it because I knew I wanted a, a robe, kimono. Kimono type style robe, whatever you want to call it. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now I have my back and my two front sewn together. Right here. That's about a four inch opening in between. Now I'm going to set in each sleeve, okay? So, <clears throat> this is the front and center right here. Right there in between my fingers. I'm going to go to one of my, my shoulder seams. And I'm going to open it up. Okay. And then I'm going to take one of my pieces I have cut for my sleeve. Here's one right here. And I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise and find the center of it. Then I will pin the center point to the seam line on my shoulder. There that is, I'm putting a pin in there. Have extra fine silk pins is what I'm using. Okay. Right sides together. You can see how shot there you can see some of the gold. Look at the little gold stars glittering. Isn't that pretty? Just love this. Could not resist this when I saw it. Okay. So Make sure I pin this in the right place. Yes, right there. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to match up my pin that I just put in. I'm going to match that <clears throat> to that seam where I sewed the front and back together. Okay. That's what I'm referring to as my shoulder seam. there. I'm going to pin it together. Okay, there's that. Now, I'm just going to go down and pin. Doo, doo, doo. I'm going to pin the length of this sleeve. And I made these sleeves really big and floppy. <clears throat> I don't remember what movie I was watching. Oh, something Geisha, I think. Memoirs of a Geisha, I think is what it was. But the, oh my gosh, the costumes and the clothing, the vintage clothing, and it was just spectacular. And that is actually what inspired me to make my own pattern for a kimono. My own version, my own kimono pattern, and it's a one size fit all. It can be fitted and adjusted if need be, as far as that goes.
The good thing about this knot, this knit not stretching, and you're not going to stretch it out of shape as you're pinning. Hi, Christina. Okay. Now I'm going to pin it down the other half. I'm going to serge that long seam together. So for the body of the kimono people, there's only four pieces to actually make. You can make them out of any fabric, whether it be cotton quilting fabric or knits or silk or denim. The sky is the limit. Flannel, anything you would want one made out of, you could make it. Another pin. I did try earlier using Wonder Clips on it. This fabric is too slick for Wonder Clips to hold. <laughs> So I couldn't use my wonder clips, not for something, not for this, to do this anyway. So it's pin city. Just got to be careful not to run any pins under your serger knife, or you'll be buying a new serger knife. So you don't want to do that. Okay, that's pin. There's one end of the sleeve. And another end right here, and I'm just going to serge all down that seam that I just pinned. <clears throat> okay. And I have no selvages to trim. Take out that first pin and get it started. I'm just going to take my time and get this long seam surged out. Big thing with it being slick is to make sure those edges stay together. I'm only trimming off maybe a quarter inch. Here, let me cut a piece of that trimming. Just a very small bit, that's all I'm trimming off. Okay. bolt of cotton gauze fabric ordered to make some make one of these out of as well. I love cotton cotton gauze fabric. For clothing. It's so nice and soft to the skin. Cool in the summertime. All that fun stuff. Okay. There's my shoulder seam. That's half of the seam. Let's keep on going with it here. Come on, you. Almost to the end. Woohoo. And when I cut, I leave about a two inch tail. I'll deal with those later. <clears throat> Alrighty.
So there is one sleeve sewn in right there. So now I'm going to repeat that process on the opposite side. Okay. So let me go over here to this remaining shoulder seam right here. Of, of sleeve fabric that I cut earlier. And once again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find the center of this piece of fab of my shoulder, um, my sleeve, yeah, my sleeve fabric. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. there. Right sides together. Right sides together. Okay. I'm just going to pin out from the <clears throat> shoulder seam to each end of the sleeve fabric. Yes, Stephanie, I am. I have it on. I'll take that off in a minute here and show everybody what we're talking about. It is awesome. And like I was saying earlier, if you have a triumph or an ovation, you need this overlock cable. It makes doing it makes doing you get much more accurate seams that way. You can use now you can use that uh, fabric guide, the big metal ruler that screws on to the cover stitch table. Now it works on this and it's awesome. I wish I could find mine. I've misplaced it. It's buried in the studio somewhere and I have searched and searched for it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to order another one <laughs> because I'm tired of looking for it. I'll tell you, as soon as I get a new one delivered to me, that's when it will it will turn up somewhere. It is probably buried under a, under fabric somewhere in the studio. I just don't know where. And that's okay because then I'll have one for my triumph and one for my euphoria. Okay. Do do do. Right there. Okay. Now we're ready to do this seam, and I did put right sides together. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You might be wondering, well, how much fabric does it take to make one of these? So <clears throat> I always buy a little more than I need. So I bought five yards of this fabric. <clears throat> simply because you never know when you're going to miscut. It happens to all of us. <clears throat> it's better just to have a little extra. Uh, 
better to have a little bit extra. For this, I'm just using the joint where the table meets the side of the machine. I'm just using that as a seam guide. That's about 5 eighths. It's close enough. Be so slickery. There we go. Get that pin out of there. Okay. Alrighty. So out of all of that, there's my wastage. Okay, that's just what I've trimmed from doing those. I've done one, two, three, four seams so far. Let's see here. Oh, I hear you, Stephanie. I am doing the four thread overlock, Stephanie, just, just four threads. And here, let me swap to another camera. Oops. Move those. And these. And we'll just have a look at that, better look at that table. And there we go. There's the new table for the, the it's called the overlock table. If you remember before. is there is a slot for your trimmings to go down in from the knife pretty awesome and before it was just a flat piece up here it didn't extend out towards you and now it actually extends out toward you just like the cover stitch table there it is Woohoo! okay so next <clears throat> excuse me I have two really big seams to go, and that's the underarm and the under sleeve. Oh, wonderful, Mark. Hi, Mark. So good to see you on here. Donna, Donna I'm not sure about that. I know the evolution, and I think right before that was the evolve, I think it had a smaller flat table, but it was for cover stitch only, I think. I know the Evolution had a smaller table, but I haven't heard of any type of new tables being put out there for the Evolve or the Evolution. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap to another camera. Because I've got to get this all together here. Hold on. Okay, so let me go here. Here we go. Okay, hello. So, <clears throat> so, what I'm going to do, I have a lot of fabric here, everybody, and it's, here is my one of my shoulder seams right here. So that means this piece of fabric I'm holding on to is my sleeve fabric. So I'm going to put right sides together. Right there. I'm going to pin down one side of it and, and hem it, then I'll repeat it on the other side. 
So right here is the very edge of my sleeve folded over in half. That's how far it's going to droop down. It's got a big droop to it, but that's what I wanted. I'm going to pin that end right there. Okay, I'm going to pin it so it goes in and out of the fabric twice so it doesn't come out on me. Now I'm just going to line up the selvage. And yes, you can see that selvage right there. As I'm doing this seam, I'll trim both of those off. Because I want to I like it to be as easy as I can. Do another another pin right there. There's my underarm seam. I'm just going to line that up. Match that seam. Right there. I'm going to pin it good. There we go. And now I'll go down from the underarm down the side for the side seam. Now if you've ever made clothing before, you'll know that this is not formal clothing because the process to make what I call a dress shirt is way more complicated than this way more complex <clears throat> but this is this is what I consider lounge wear beach wear so it doesn't have to be have a traditional tailoring type of construction to it and hopefully if all is well these ends line up perfectly and if not that's okay they can be trimmed hold on it's off a little bit, so I'm going to work my way back to the under seam. Do, 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 do. And see if I can't take it out, that little bit of excess, right up there. Okay. It's looking better. There we go. I just flipped how I was folding that seam the opposite way. Now, right there where that pin is, that's my underarm. So, hi, so, hi, Sally. Oh, Christina, I love kimonos, too. I always think of a nice long walk along the beach at sunrise with a big cup of coffee with Baileys in it, walking down the beach in a kimono. Yes. In a previous life, also known as in the 60s and 70s, I had a bit of that hippie person into me, okay? I was a bit of a hippie. Okay, so we're going to do this long side seam now. Oh, I will, Coralie. Yes. <clears throat> so, now, here comes... Right sides, well, I didn't check that, but yes, right sides are together. That's very important. And you know, you can make these on just a regular sewing machine or even the Sashiko. However, this fabric 
cannot be sewn on Sashiko. It's a knit, only a woven fabric. Okay. Now I'm coming up to my underarm area and I'm gonna take my time there and make sure everything's nice and flat. Sure, my raw edges are all lined up nice and neat. Underarm side seam is complete. Right there is the edge of the sleeve, the underarms, underarm, and down to the bottom hem right there. Okay, so next we're going to repeat that process on the other side. I was actually in grade school in the 60s, and I graduated from high school in 1977. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I'm not a spring chicken by any, any way, shape, or form. <laughs> okay, now I have to find the other side. <laughs> okay, let's see here. On my shoulder there there's the okay there's the middle of the back right there okay here okay this is part of the front and there is that upper the upper part of that sleeve neck opening sleeve oh wonderful Sally so I am not using, I'm using a four thread, four thread over lock stitch is what I'm using for this part of the process. Now then, do, do, do. There is my side seam right there. There's the edge of the sleeve. Okay, and I think it will go like a this. It will. Okay, so here's the under, under seam for the sleeve. Awesome. Awesome, Lee. Lisa. Yes, four thread overlock is what I'm using. You know, there are some other stitches you could use. You could use a three thread flat lock. You could do a four thread overlock with a two thread ch safety chain stitch. I mean, there's so many stitches you could use. <clears throat> but I just decided to do to do the four thread overlock for this this part of the the process. Well, 
when it comes time to hemming, I will be using a triple, I will be using the cover stitch side of the machine to do my hemming with, I think. We'll see. But it will take more than one episode to complete this. As far as that goes, I will probably do another episode. Uh, uh, let me think here. I won't be here Friday. It'll be one, one night next week. Okay. Get this out. Maybe even Sunday. It depends how things are going. I'm also working on a my big drapery project. <clears throat> Making ooh wee one two three four five rooms of formal draperies for a customer. And I have to have those done before done and installed before I head to Florida. It's going to be tight. I welcome the opportunity tonight for this. It gives me a break from it. Okay. That ended up just perfectly. Okay. So there it is. This is the bottom hem, and I'm going to start here and work my way to underneath the sleeve. Okay. Oh, wonderfully. Lee, I will be coming to, we're deciding on the dates for um, for my Serger camp at Flash. And this will probably, this will be one of the projects for it. Virtual classes are wonderful, but I think you some some of us need more visual and <clears throat> I think an in-person class you sometimes you just get more from it. In all of my, my workshops I do live out on the road. Everybody finishes their projects in class. There's no, there's no homework. <laughs> no homework. Oh, wonderfully, Lisa. Okay, coming up to the underarm. And what I do, I'm just gonna go a little bit past where all those seam lines join for the underarm seam. And then I'm just going to gently straighten that seam out. Here I go. I'm just straightening it out and making sure that there is no wrinkles under there. I'm just going through the proper amount of layers. Oh, Sally, that's why I bought the Euphoria. It's cover stitch only. Even though this wonderful machine does it all, I also like having a dedicated cover stitch machine for my decorative fun stuff. Oh, I hear you, Lee, Lisa. <laughs> okay, that seam is done. And let's see here. I think 
What is next? Do I want to do the facing around the neck? That's a little bit more involved with how it's getting to be. Okay. What I'm going to do is some prep work on the facing. I cut three strips of fabric and I have to join them together to make one long strip. <clears throat> but here it is. So you can see it right there. And I'm going, I will try it on right before we finish this up for tonight. And we'll do another episode. And we're just going to do the finishing all the way around the neck and the front sides of it. And then there will be actually three episodes. And then I'll do the hemming. And I will use one of the hemming, <coughs> hemming attachments using the cover stitch side of the machine for that. Okay, so next. These are the only three pieces of fabric I have left for this kimono. How fast is that? It hasn't even been an hour, everybody. It literally takes, it will take a bit longer to do the next step. And that's why I'm going to wait until I'm fresh. I'm perfectly fresh. So this will create, hold on here. Just turn this a little bit more this way. There we go. So what I'm going to do with this, this will be in the end folded in half and it will be the front facing that will go all the way around the neck and down each side. Okay, That's what that's going to be, but I cut three strips and I'm going to, and when I say I cut a strip that's off across the width of the fabric or WOF, I got to join these end to end. And that will have it prepped for our epi our next episode, which will be either tomorrow night. It'll probably be tomorrow night, everybody. I'll need a break from drapery making by then for sure. <laughs> okay. But I've almost I'm almost to the point. I've got three bedrooms I'm making drapes for for this customer and then living room drapes and then dining room draperies. All of it is pleated with um, thermal foam lining. And I'm close. Tomorrow I will start assembling the lining to the front of the drapes and then doing the pinch pleats. So by Sunday, I will have three rooms of draperies complete. And that will just leave me one, two, three, four, five, six more panels to go, or three more windows. Okay, so there's one. Here we go. Oops, there you are. <laughs> Let me move this over a little bit. I forgot to move this back, but you can see. There we go. So there's one. And that'll, that'll be folded in half and going around the neck and side openings. One more. Yes, what's, when the light hits it, it's got gold flecks in it. Look at that. Like little stars. Isn't it pretty? I don't, I don't, uh, I don't usually don't do impulse <laughs> fabric buying. But when I saw this, yeah, it was a total impulse. And I know if I buy a five yard piece of, of apparel fabric, that'll I can make just about anything I want. I decided to make this one into a nice, loose, comfy, I'm gonna call it a beach kimono for lack of a better word. Okay. I'm just making sure 
and I'm doing all of my seams. If there's a selvage involved, like right here, I'm just cutting letting the knife cut right along the edge of the selvage. And I will tell you that saves a lot of steps when you can do that. Okay. I just heard a straight pin hit the floor. Hold on. <clears throat> I don't see it. Let's see. Well, I'll look for it here in a minute. <laughs> okay, so I have that done. Now that is my neck opening for the around the back of the neck and with the shoulders and down each side. <clears throat> There's that. Now was this is way too much, but that's okay. I always have a plan for that. Okay. So let me turn this inside out. I will put it and I will model it for you. Even though it's not complete. And boy howdy. There it is. Okay. So let me turn it right side out. Okay. Get that as wide as I can get it. You have to forgive the mess in the back. There we go. Okay. Ooh, it is slippery, everybody. There we go. Okay. Let's see, it's plenty big. There's a run right there. My rotary blade when I was cutting. I'll have to smooth that out. But yes, so there you go. As you can see, Very nice. Loungewear, beachwear, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Just raise this up a little bit. There we go. Okay. I'll back up a little bit. But as you can see, it will still have, and this when folded in half, this will make a about a uh, approximately a four inch facing all the way around and we'll line both sides and that's what it is there you go mark wizard wear that's it <laughs> but i have made them in cotton quilting fabric even i do even have one that's done with um oh um downtown abbey fabric even so yeah, they make just make a really nice piece of loungewear. What I really like to use though <clears throat> for loungewear is cotton gauze fabric. The pants I have on I made and they are made with cotton gauze and they are so comfy. Okay. Let me swap over to the other camera. Okay, everybody. So there will be <laughs> there will be two more episodes because this is for this. This is the most complex part to do. Simply because I'm going to make this a casing around all the raw edges on the front of the kimono and I'll show you that process <clears throat> however it is easier in my opinion to do this on a serger than on a straight stitch machine for instance simply because you can finish 
all the seams with a triple cover stitch and put a, a woolly nylon or a fuzzy yarn in the looper. Oh, wonderful, Janelle. So happy to hear that. Absolutely. Wizard wear. There we go. <laughs> yes. Whew. So, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Yeah, we'll do this again tomorrow night. We'll put the front facing on around the, around the front of the garment. And then we'll set up the serger for all the hemming, which we'll just do that on Sunday night and make it easy. <laughs> okay, everybody, have a wonderful rest of your evening. Oh, hold on. Actually, Christina, cotton gauze, it's a very open weave. It's very thin, but it, it has a weave kind of like linen, but it's super soft. If you've ever seen, some people use that fabric to make baby slings out of. I've seen people use it for that. But also in a hot climate, it's very open and breathable. So it's really great. If you, if you live in Florida, it'd be a great fabric to have in your wardrobe for sure. But I love the cotton gauze fabric. It's, hold on here. I have little thread snippets all over mine from surging. However, there we go. Just come down here. Okay. And you can see <clears throat> it's this is a little bit thicker, but this one has been laundered a lot. And <clears throat> when you first get it, it's much thinner or opaque. But the more you launder it, the more it shrinks up together and all that fun stuff. Yes, Christina, living in Florida, you need cotton gauze fabric. <laughs> it is soup and it can be 100 degrees outside and it, it really helps with the heat management for sure. Okay. Okay, everybody, I'm going to call it a night, and I got so I got to go fix dinner. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hi, Roxanne. Oh, absolutely, Roxanne. I'll be doing a feature on the Sasha Co. here before too much longer. Okay, everyone, have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Same bat time, same bat channel tomorrow night. See you tomorrow night, everyone. Thank you. Bye.